Madam Deputy Speaker, I remind the House of my register of interests, which uh, reveals that I am an investment and business advisor to a couple of companies. I congratulate my honourable friend for Lathen Horncastle on her excellent maiden speech. She gave yeah, us a yeah. very good portrait of her constituency, uh, and I have noted to beware of her arrival when she's in her armour. Uh, <laughs> and if she throws her gauntlet around, I think I'll be looking the other way, because she's clearly going to be a very good champion for, for her area. Yeah, yeah. I welcome the, the emphasis in this budget on prosperity. I want a, a party and a government that drives more prosperity for everyone in our country. And I want that to be a benefit to people on all income levels, and I especially want to see more people get into work and find other routes out of low income and poverty. And so I think the Chancellor is right to say that Britain deserves a pay rise, and I think he is right to, uh, to say that we need to reinforce that pay rise as people get it. Or, reinforce people's success in getting into jobs and getting a pay packet with tax cuts. And I want tax cuts for all, and I'm glad he's made a start on the promises in our Conservative manifesto. And it is very crucial that as he goes about this task of getting rid of unemployment and poverty with supportive policies, that people are better off. And what I will want to do when we get to the detail of the welfare cuts is to see what the impact is, because we need to look at the overall impact uh, if people are going from unemployment to work, uh, if they're staying in work, uh, if they're getting a pay rise, if they're getting a tax cut. Those are all positive things which will make them better off, and we need to make sure that those things that are making them better off are not uh, completely offset or badly damaged by the, the changes in welfare which he is making, and I, I look forward to those more, more detailed debates. But the overall picture in the budget is actually quite different from the picture of the next five years set out uh, in the outgoing coalition budget. I find nothing surprising about that because uh, we now have the opportunity to think the strategy through based on the success in getting the recovery this far in the last parliament and learning from the experiences the coalition had uh, of the difficulties of getting that recovery up to speed and getting productivity to come through in the way that we would like. And I think the Chancellor is right to make adjustments. People need to work smarter to be paid better. Uh, we need a pay rise, but we have to earn our pay rise, and that is the, the purpose behind many of the measures. I think also the uh, expenditure proposals uh, in the March budget were quite tight in the middle years of this Parliament. And I notice that that is the Chancellor's conclusion, because there are some quite big spending increases put into the red book for those middle years. I see that the current spend in 16-17 is going to be 15 billion higher than the, the March forecast, uh, and that the 17-18 spend, current expenditure, is going to be 25 billion higher than the budget forecast. So I think that makes it a bit easier. There was quite a lot of criticism at the time of the March budget that the numbers were tight, and I think that gives us a bit more scope, and we've seen some of the benefit of that already. Uh, in the defence statement, but there will be other benefits, and it means there is rather more latitude in the whole situation. Overall, it means that by the end of this Parliament, on these plans, uh, we will be spending £69 billion a year more than we were in the last year of the last Parliament. And there will doubtless be arguments about whether that is a real cut or not a real cut. We had these arguments in the past Parliament when there was a similar rise in spending, and I argued that there would be no overall real cuts. Uh, I was told that was wrong, but the subsequent figures showed that, that was broadly what happened, that we avoided overall real cuts. Within that, of course, because health and education and the European Union contributions and overseas aid were priorities, there were areas that obviously suffered uh, in order to balance those figures out. And the way the deficit comes down is, of course, not spending cuts at all. The way the deficit comes down is by a very large increase in tax revenues coming through from a more prosperous and faster-growing economy. And the, uh, the figures here now say that the tax revenues will be running £168 billion a year higher in the last year of this Parliament uh, than they were in the last year of the Coalition. I thought that was a a tax rise to, to suit all socialists. That is a very large increase in, in taxation that's going to come. Uh, but I'm pleased that that is coming not by raising the rates. Indeed, if we raise the rates, we probably collect less money in many cases. But it's coming by growing the economy and by people being better off, and so more people are able to afford the taxes. 
and it means that by the end of the, the Parliament, uh, the tax revenues on these figures are running at some 10 billion a year more uh, than the forecast for those revenues uh, as short a time ago as March, and I think that shows the improvement in the prospects. Deputy Speaker, I thank the right honourable gentleman for giving away. Has he seen the OBR report accompanying the Red Book where it says, and I quote, we have revised borrowing up in 2016-17 and more significantly in 2017-18, while the surplus of £5.2 billion pounds in 2018-19 that we forecast in March is now expected to be a deficit of £6.4 billion. Pounds. Is the right honourable gentleman comfortable with that? I'm perfectly comfortable with that. It's the direct result of easing this, the squeeze on the spending, which uh, various people had objected to in the past. And I think it still shows the deficit coming down and being eliminated uh, over the course of this Parliament, which is exactly what ought to be done. And I wonder whether uh, the Honourable Gentleman's new enthusiasm for this uh, <laughs> is, is a personal enthusiasm or whether it's just a tease on me. Uh, but if it were a personal enthusiasm, it is very welcome that the Labour Party would now like to go faster in deficit reduction in the middle years of this Parliament than the, the current proposals before us for debate. If we look at the economic background in, in the official forecasts, um, we can see uh, that the growth figures are still looking pretty good, and we've had this welcome up revision to the immediate past. Uh, we see that there's been a, a welcome up with revision to the numbers of people in employment, and this is fundamental to the whole strategy. Uh, there has been a modest deterioration in the balance of payments, which I think shows there's more work to be done, and the productivity work will link into that to make us more competitive. We've got to earn our living, and that means we need more competitive products. And all this growth and improved revenue is taking place despite higher interest rates, as the forecast does assume some modest increase in interest rates compared with past forecasts. On productivity, on working smarter, on working better, uh, I welcome the outlines of the scheme the Chancellor gave us today. It does mean better roads. It does mean spending the money more wisely in the railways to get the capacity in the areas of uh, the rail system where we need that extra capacity and the extra efficiency. I think it means a lot of work on energy because we're going to need cheaper energy and more energy. Uh, as we get the march of the makers and as the northern powerhouse cranks up, uh, it is going to require more electricity and more gas, and I hope we will find cheaper ways of producing them uh, than we, we experienced in recent years under the policies being followed. And it's very important that we price people back into energy-intensive markets rather than exporting all our energy-intensive business to other countries. It's no, no great win for those who wish to cut carbon dioxide if it's poured out of a factory in China rather than out of one in the United Kingdom. And we need to be very conscious of the need to be competitive in our energy. We're going to need more on, on broadband, uh, and we're going to clearly need much more uh, on housing, as many people uh, have already referred to uh, in recent days in the debate. So I look forward to uh, an investment-led recovery with much more private sector investment coming in. I think we need to pay special attention to cheaper energy. I think we need to fix the railways because I think they're spending too much and getting too little from them. And so it's not just a question of big investment programs. It's a question of in managing them better. But above all, we need to make sure that as we put in the welfare reforms, everyone is better off and that they are getting the benefits of those tax cuts and those higher wages. Yeah, yeah, yeah.